Hello, hello. I hope you're doing great wherever you are. This is going to be an overview of LUFS and LKFS. What the heck is it? How do you use it? Why do we use it? How do you implement it? Um, I'm going to try to cover all of that and really simplify it in basic terms because it is a very complex issue. Um, it is still getting itself figured out and there is, although there's a standard, it's really not that standardized. It's different from for every streaming platform, and it's different for um, every network. Everybody's kind of making up their own rules, even though there's one standard rule, and it varies from different countries. But I'm going to try to really just simplify it for you. So LUFS is a new way of measuring uh, loudness. And there's tons of different meters that do the same thing. So Logic has this built-in LUFS meter, and uh, Waves has a WLM, uh, LUFS, or LKFS meter. Isotope makes one. Um, I believe Nugent makes one. Um, Dolby has one. And um, they all, it's kind of good to know all of them and learn them. And they're all a little bit different. There's also some hardware units that I've mixed with. Um, but the one thing to remember is the broadcast spec is negative 24 LUFS or LKFS. LUFS and LKFS are basically the same thing. And if you want to go and read all the articles and what the differences are, just they're basically the same. Um, some require LUFS, some require LKFS, and you can, um, you can find those settings within these different um, plugins. Like if we go in and we want to look at we want this to measure dialog. It's going to switch this to LKFS. Um, but basically, even if the specs are LKFS and you measure it in LUFS, you're going to be in the ballpark. And that's all you need to worry about is the ballpark. Because once you're in the ballpark, it's basically in the general loudness and you'll be fine. So what does this all mean? Well, in around 2012, 2013, television or broadcast started implementing or enforcing the Calm Act, basically saying that everything needed to be, and worldwide, uh, everything needed to be about the same volume on television. Because what was happening is if you were watching a program and it was really quiet and then a commercial came on, it would blow your eardrums out because it was louder than the other program. So all the like minds got together and said, hey, they, things need to be the exact same loudness, not by RMS or DBFS, not just on a meter. It actually needs to be perceived at the same volume. And LUFS and LKFS use this crazy mathematical weighting to measure audio in the way that the human ear uh, perceives audio, which RMS, you can hit the same number, but one can be way louder than the other. Um, so, how is this used? Well, basically, when you have a program or a track, if it is being mixed directly for broadcast, you need your meters to reach around negative 24 for the overall volume. If you're mixing music for music's sake, you can go a lot higher, like negative 10, negative 13, negative 16. Um, but even the new uh, streaming services are enforcing quieter mixes. In the 90s and the early 2000s, things were really, really loud and crushed. And now things are getting quieter because of this whole, you know, uh, triple effect with the Loudness Act. So let me play back and I'll show you what these meters kind of look like. Listen, gather up. Okay. Listen, listen, gather up. Okay. Listen, listen, gather up. Okay. Listen, listen, gather up. Okay. I saw. A monster, listen, listen, gather up. A monster, listen, listen, gather up. A monster, hey, everyone. I saw a monster, listen, listen, gather up. And what are you noticing? They all have different readings. There's never been one LKFS or LUFS meter that has been exactly the same. That's what I'm saying. There, there is a standard, but it's still not so standardized. They're all a little bit different. Like this long term is negative 11, and this integrated is negative 13. And if you look at the momentary, this is, or short term, this is saying. A monster, listen, listen, a monster. 
they're basically the same. They're all within the ballpark. So don't worry about it too much. Uh, every mixer I've worked with uses their own and they like it. And it's you just pick a meter, try to, to pick your spec and just try to do your best to, to, to meet it. There's no way of hitting it perfect every time. Um, but it's just got to be in the ballpark. Okay. So in music, I have found that around negative 10, negative 11, negative 13 is a good range for music to be punchy and loud and have dynamic range, but still be quiet enough to translate well across these services like Spotify and YouTube and, and, um, Pandora. So what you do is you slap on a meter, you, whatever DAW you're in or whatever program you have, pick a meter, put it on your master. And what you want to do is some of them require you to reset them. Some of them automatically reset themselves. Oh, no, this requires it to be reset. And what you're looking for is the long-term average. There's a short term, which can be helpful in showing you how loud it is right now. But what you're looking for is from start to finish of this song, what is the overall average loudness? And that's the number you're looking for because there are these complex machines that measure this with algorithms. So you want it to meet that as closely as possible. So what you do is you play from beginning to end. Hey, everyone! Hey, hey, everyone! Hey, everyone! Hey, hey, everyone! Listen, listen! Hey, everyone! Hey, hey, everyone! Hey, everyone! Hey, hey, everyone! Listen! Notice it's getting a little bit louder. The number's creeping up a bit. So this is a good meter. I'm not as familiar with the Logic one as I am with the WLM. Um, right now, this would be a good range. I would want to get it to like negative 10, so I'd crank it up a, like 2 dB right now, and then I would reset it, play it from beginning to end, and see where it measures out. But uh, I stopped it too soon just to kind of give an explanation, but um, that's how you do it, folks. So know the spec that you're shooting for. Basically, if you're shooting for broadcast, like television, you want it to be, it would, this would need to be a lot quieter, like negative 24. But here's the thing. The difference when I'm saying broadcast, if you're scoring a television, if you're writing a song specifically for a television show, like you've been contracted to write for that show itself, you need to be in the right in the right area, like negative 24 or negative 22. If you're just writing tracks to license for television, then you want to go a little bit louder, like negative 10, negative 12, negative 13, um, because there's still a trend where loud is better. And uh, if you want it to go on streaming services or iTunes, you're going to want to go a little bit louder. So slap a meter on your on your master track, play it from beginning to end and try to hit that number, and um, it takes some trial and error, but uh, then you're following the new standard and mixing like a pro, writing like a pro. Um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to comment below. I'll try to answer you as soon as possible. And if this was helpful to you, uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, have an awesome one wherever you are. Catch you on the next one.